educators nurture and enrich the minds of their students academically and often become role models that inspire student excellence and a desire to contribute to the common good. From Guyana and St. Vincent came two distinguished gentlemen who excelled in their respective fields and went the noble distance of imparting their vast knowledge to many generations of students. These educators are admired for their expert knowledge, lucid lectures, well-prepared practical sessions, and the genuine interest they showed in their students' overall development. These are our Caribbean icons in science education. A leading surgeon with hands that moved like lightning, he trained hundreds of medical doctors over an illustrious career spanning 25 years at the University of the West Indies, Jamaica. Sir Harry Anamontodo was the first West Indian to be appointed to a chair in the Faculty of Medicine at the University College of the West Indies at Mona. Born in Essequibo, Guyana in 1920, Anamontodo knew from an early age that he wanted to become a doctor. As a child, he had an uncanny curiosity about life and death. Whenever animals died, he was quick to dissect the bodies to understand why they had died. A good student, Adam Montodo secured a scholarship to attend the prestigious Queen's College in Georgetown in 1935, where he excelled in the arts and sciences, to attain the coveted British Guyana Scholarship in 1939. The start of World War II delayed his pursuit of the scholarship until 1941, when he went to the London Hospital Medical College, University of London, to study medicine. While at the university, he earned many prizes, including the Charrington Prize in Anatomy and the T.M. Ross Prize in Medicine and Pathology. He graduated in 1946, obtained a diploma in Tropical Medicine and Hygiene the following year, and a fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons in England in 1951. His interest and skill in surgery was acquired during his time at King George V Hospital in Ilford, Essex, where he was mentored by the famous abdominal surgeon, Herman Taylor. After eight years in England, Anamontodo was eager to work in the West Indies. In 1953, he entered the University College Hospital of the West Indies at Mona as Senior Surgical Registrar. Four years later, he became a senior lecturer and was also elevated to the chair and head of the Department of Surgery. This was the most rapid promotion ever in the faculty's history. Professor Anamontodo was known for his speed and dexterity in performing surgeries and was probably in his day the world's leading expert in carcinoma of the penis. Anamontodo's son, a captain in the Jamaica Defense Force, recalls his father's dedication to his chosen career. He had a reputation for being very fast as a surgeon and, and you hear the stories from former students of his that if you're late for his sessions in surgery at, at UWI, at the hospital, and he's supposed to start sessions at 8 o'clock and you arrive there at 10 past 8 thinking that you're cool, and he's probably gone through one or two small minor operations already. Yeah. He was an excellent teacher, a founding member of the Association of Surgeons in Jamaica, and was instrumental in building the capability of not just the medical department in Jamaica. He was also instrumental in the setting up of the Eastern Caribbean Medical Scheme and helped to coordinate the teaching of surgery in Barbados and together with Dr. Mickey Walrund, the surgical residency program was begun at Mona. Every year there is the annual lecture in his honor and a number of the alumni come back to Jamaica and they join in. In 1967, Professor Anamontodo was knighted by Her Majesty the Queen for his service to medicine and medical education in the Caribbean region. He made an outstanding contribution to the region's capability in surgery through his 25 years of teaching at the University of the West Indies, where he trained over 1,500 medical graduates. His peers in the faculty noted his effective and affable interaction with his students, some of whom now hold leading positions across the globe. One of his former interns speaks of his evident love for teaching. He has received many honors in his, in his lifetime of, of, uh, of surgery and teaching. He loved to teach. He was an excellent teacher and a first-rate surgeon. Uh, uh, some of his work uh, remains unchallenged to this day. Most of the surgeons of today have been taught by him. In 1979, he left the university to work as professor of surgery at the University of Kebangsan in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, a post he held until his death in 1986. 
an authority in botany, this icon taught and mentored thousands of students in the life sciences and built the region's capability in botany and plant biotechnology. Professor Julian Duncan is an expert on local botany and has lectured at the University of the West Indies for over 35 years. He is also responsible for the establishment of a comprehensive semi-commercial plant biotechnology laboratory at the University of the West Indies, which has played a major role in the development of Trinidad and Tobago's capability in biotechnology. Born in St. Vincent on December 9, 1933, life for Julian was generally a happy one. He attended St. Vincent Boys Grammar School, where he played football and badminton and excelled in geography and English language. I liked botany at school, not as much as I liked geography. But when I got to university and found I couldn't do geography, botany then became my love, and I've never regretted it. After completing his secondary education in 1957, he wanted to study geography, but since it was not offered at the University College of the West Indies, Jamaica, he decided to study botany and graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in botany and zoology. In 1960, he became the first recipient of the Sir James Irvin Memorial Scholarship tenable at the University of St. Andrews, Scotland. There, he obtained a doctorate in fungal genetics and cytology. His doctoral thesis researched the nuclear division of fungus, for which there was no precise theory in existence. So he developed a new hypothesis, which was later published, and today is still highly regarded and used by the scientific community. He returned to Trinidad and joined the staff of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine as a lecturer in botany. This was the beginning of his prolific career as an educator. He had a tremendous influence on everybody who attended his lectures because of his tremendous drive and his motivation to get people interested in botany and in biology in general. Today, the thousands of undergraduate botany students throughout the Caribbean and 11 postgraduate students in tissue culture give testimony of this. Duncan attributes the success of his teaching career to his unique teaching methods, which encourage students to think and read more about the topic. I remember um, my very first day, my very first lecture in botany with Professor Duncan. Came in, we all sat down, he said, okay, you're reading for your degree, and you're going to do so extensively, exhaustively, and unfortunately, you will be required to think in my classes. He was very attentive, intuitive. You know, if you frowned in his class, he would notice. And he would stop his lecture and ask you, you know, where are you lost? Where have I lost you? Let, let me repeat what I was saying. Let me explain again, just so that this one student would grasp the concepts that he was teaching at the time. His students credit his meticulously organized lectures and laboratory periods which complement lucid lectures as an essential learning tool. For his excellence in teaching and administration, he was awarded the University of the West Indies Vice Chancellor's Award in the inaugural year of 1994. What impressed me about him was the fact that he seemed to be always there. He was never absent as far as I can remember, he was never late and he came to classes well prepared. This reflected probably a lot of hours of research. Professor Duncan introduced new courses in botany and plant tissue culture as a new specialization. His early research work focused on plant diseases such as witch's broom, fungi on cocoa, mites on the double chaconia, and the nematode destruction of the sweet potato plant. He also worked on the genetic improvement of food crops and ornamental plants. The pioneer of plant biotechnology in Trinidad and Tobago, he spearheaded tissue culture applications for a wide range of local commercial species. The aim was to produce superior plants in a shorter time frame than traditional methods. He established the Biotechnology Laboratory at the University of the West Indies to support training, research and development in tissue culture and plant genetic engineering. For his lifelong commitment to biotechnology, he was given the Nehurst Lifetime Achievement Award in 2002. My principal philosophy is, with God's help, all things are possible. There's a word that I would like struck out of the dictionary, and that is can't. I believe I haven't tried. 
I never say I can't do this or I can't do that. I say I haven't tried. Throughout all his achievements, he credits his success over the years as a scientist and educator to the support of his wife and family. The sky is your limit. Never think that anything is beyond you. Always try.